He is also the head of surgical oncology at the National University Cancer Institute of Singapore. And he has a special interest in peritoneal metastasis for gastric cancer. He will be speaking to us on the recent advances in the field of peritoneal carcinomatosis. Professor So, please. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, for the kind introductions. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to join us in this uh, webinar. It's my pleasure to speak to you about the recent advances in management of uh, peritoneal metastasis uh, from uh, gastric cancers. I think we, we all know that peritoneal carcinomatosis is a very serious problem. Peritoneum is the most common site of metastasis from many uh, GI and onco uh, ovarian cancer, and also the most common site for gastric cancer metastasis. And on top of that, the symptoms uh, for the patient are very distressing, such as uh, malignant ascites and intestinal obstruction. They are difficult to treat, and the prognosis are very poor. This uh, diagram shows the prognosis of uh, peritoneal uh, metastasis is worse compared to uh, other sites of metastasis. This is uh, um, a study from a large prospective cohort and, uh, from a colorectal primary. Looking at the survival of patients of uh, peritoneal metastasis compared to lung and liver metastasis. The survival curve in purples are the patient with peritoneal metastasis, the one in red are liver metastasis, and the one in blue is uh, lung metastasis. As you can see that based on the, based on the median survivals, the patient with peritoneal metastasis are significantly inferior compared to patients with other metastasis, and the difference are statistically significant indicating that the behavior of peritoneal metastasis are more aggressive and it is deserve a special treatment. This is a current treatment option of peritoneal carcinomatosis, including uh, systemic chemotherapy. On top, we have also have in hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, or we call HIPET, together with a cytoreductive surgery. We also have catheter-based intraperitoneal chemotherapy. And last but not least, a normal low flow technique called a pie patch, which stands for pressurized intraperitoneal aerosol chemotherapy. Systemic chemotherapy in general, the results are disappointing for patients with peritoneal metastasis. The median survival at most is uh, about 12 months. This, the, the reason is because of the presence of a peritoneal uh, plasma barrier, which limits the, the role of systemic chemotherapy, resulting in poor response with uh, systemic treatment and the toxicity of the chemotherapy. However, at least at the moment, the systemic chemotherapy remains the current standard for peritoneal carcinomatosis as a palliative treatment. Hyperthermic intraperitoneal uh, uh, chemotherapy and together with cytoreductive surgery has been developed for the last uh, uh, three decades and usually was performed with a curative intent. However, HIPED and CRS usually only allow a single treatment and is associated with a lot of uh, uh, significant surgical uh, morbidity and mortality. And the result of uh, HIPED and uh, CRS uh, typically de depends on the cancer uh, types and the disease burden. It's better with patients with a lower uh, PCI. And many reports have shown that the uh, HIPED and CRS is less effective for gastric cancer. This is a data from, uh, 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 so on the survival outcome from a large volume center in, uh, in France, looking at more than 1,200 patients receiving uh, HIPED. As you can see from the survival curve, high pets are, are do, do well for pupil patient with a pseudomyxoma or appendicular cancers, but it's worse and it's, it's disappointing for a patient with a gastric primary. Next method we want to talk about is catheter-based intraperitoneal chemotherapy. And this diagram shows the concept of intraperitoneal chemotherapy. When you expose uh, chemotherapy directly on the tumor nodules on the peritoneum and comparing the, the intraperitoneal versus uh, systemic IV drug supply of chemotherapy, you can show that uh, the pharmacokinetic advantage of giving the chemotherapy directly on the peritoneum, including uh, higher drug exposures to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the tumor nodules and also less systemic uh, side effect from the chemotherapy. 
on, on top of it, the bioavailability and the effect of intraperitoneal chemotherapy can be modified by both a physical property, such as the temperatures and the molecular size of the chemical, and also the biological property of the peritoneum, such as the vasculatures of the peritoneum. The concept of catheter-based intraperitoneal chemotherapy is very similar to uh, people with uh, receiving peritoneal dialysis uh, of, uh, for renal failure as a renal replacement therapy. Therefore, the surgery is a simple, it's a day surgery. We put an uh, in, in enduring catheter into the abdominal cavity and then put a subcutaneous pot under the skin for administration of the chemotherapy. And the advantage of this technique is um, this is a simple procedure and the treatment is uh, outpatient therapy in the cancer center. And the treatment uh, is also about re repeated dosing, which is very important for patients with uh, uh, systemic metastatic disease. And the procedure was first pioneered in, um, in, in ovarian cancers in this landmark paper in New England Journal of Medicine in 2006, followed by uh, uh, Dr. Osha, Osh uh, Ishigami's work uh, for gastric cancer. So since, to, uh, since 2012, our center has um, started the intraperitoneal uh, protocol using intraperitoneal paxitaxel to get, uh, uh, together with uh, systemic uh, C-LOX. This uh, table shows our regimes. Our systemic therapy consisted of uh, capsidabine and oxaloplectins. This is the most uh, one of the most common regimes for stage four gastric cancer. And together with intraperitoneal paxitaxel, it's a three week cycle and our patient will receive a minimum of eight cycle. And after the eight cycle, if the patient have uh, continued to receive the treatment, we will stop the oxaloplectin because of the, 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 the side effects of the neuroplexy and then continue with the intraperitoneal paxitaxel. And we have uh, published a few reports on our uh, experience uh, in the past. Recently, we just uh, analyzed the final result of our phase two studies and compare our patient with uh, intraperitoneal and systemic chemotherapy compared with a uh, historical control. This group of uh, historical control, our patient only received systemic uh, chemotherapy and they only have a peritoneal metastasis receive at least two types of uh, systemic chemotherapy. And this is our primary endpoint of our uh, study, looking at overall survival. Uh, the, the, the line in blue are the patient with intraperitoneal versus uh, systemic chemotherapy and, and systemic chemotherapy. And the one in green are the one received uh, systemic chemotherapy alone. As you can see that uh, in terms of survival, the survival uh, for a patient with uh, intravenous is only 10.6 uh, months. Of our patient with intraperitoneal chemotherapy will increase to uh, 14.6 months, and the difference are statistically significant. And more uh, interestingly are the patients. Uh, for patients uh, with good response, will perform a conversion gastrectomy. The, the indication for conversion gastrectomy is the patient if you have uh, received very good response, excellent response after the intraperitoneal and systemic chemotherapy, they will at least have two occasions of negative peritoneal fluid cytology, have no extra peritoneal metastasis outside the abdominal cavity, and um, no gross peritoneal metastasis on uh, repeated uh, staging laparoscopy. And uh, um, in those group of patients will perform a D2 gastrectomy, but without a peritonealectomy. And this is a survival. We show that the one in blue are the patient receiving a conversion gastrectomy. They have a median survival of uh, two years and one year survival of 85%. Just one quick example, uh, this is a very recent case, and the patient, uh, um, a 70-year-old male, who have uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis. This is a picture taken before the, uh, uh, on diagnostic laparoscopy. You can see the, the pictures that the diffuse carcinomatosis in four qu quadrants with the PCI of 23, the presence of malignant ascites. And this is the picture after X cycle of IP chemotherapy on the, just uh, in April this year. And you can see that the, the, the peritoneal metastasis uh, basically dis disappear on, uh, on the peritoneal and the parietal peritoneal service, both in the supercolic and also in the paragodic gutter and in the, and in the pelvis. And you can see that our enduring capital for the IP chemotherapy.
The only thing we can see in these nodules, but when you look at it uh, using NBI, that this is uh, benign looking and also confirm it on uh, frozen sections. So the final the PCI for this patient is uh, zero. And on the mutation tree, we can only see the scarring of the, 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 the peritoneal metastasis and the no obvious uh, peritoneal metastasis. So these patients receive a conversion total gastrectomy and the final histology show that a poorly differentiated tumor, near complete pathological response and um, YPT4A and N1 disease. Two out of 54 lymph nodes are involved and, but all the peritoneal nodules, fluid cytology and the margins are negative for malignancy. I think many of you know that um, um, about this uh, clinical trial called uh, Phoenix uh, Trials. It's a randomized controlled trial comparing patient, comparing patient receiving intraperitoneal paxitaxel with uh, S1 and paxitaxel IV intravenously versus systemic chemotherapy uh, uh, alone. This study is um, uh, the principal investigator is uh, Dr. Ishigami. And um, um, the primary endpoint of study is the overall survival. As you can see from the graph on the left, and the blue lines are the patient received the uh, IP chemotherapy, and the one with the yellow line is the systemic chemotherapy. You can see the two lines is diverge. Unfortunately, statistically, the, the difference uh, uh, are not uh, statistically significant with the p-value of 0 0.08. But however, when you do a follow-up analysis, when you follow up the patient for one more year, you can see that the patients uh, with systemic chemotherapy, the one in yellow, the three-year survival is 6% as expected, but the patient with received intraperitoneal chemotherapy, the three-year survival reached uh, 22%. The last procedures I want to talk, the treatment procedure we'll talk about is uh, PIPATCH, which stands for Pressurized Intraperitoneal Aerosol Chemotherapy. This is a low-vol therapy pioneered by Professor Mark Raymond, where he converted the the chemotherapy solution into aerosol through a high pressure injector and a micro pump. And these procedures that uh, will inject and spray the aerosol chemo chemotherapy aerosol into the abdominal cavity. And because it's this aerosol, they will circulate within the, uh, uh, homo more homogeneously within the abdominal cavity under pressure. The procedure is performed under laparoscopic guidance at the end of the procedure, the residual chemotherapy aerosol will dispose outside the operating room through a closed uh, system. The advantage of a pipette compared to a systemic chemotherapy, including that we make, uh, because this is aerosol and a gas, is that the, the distribution of drugs in a confined space like a peritoneal cavity is much more, much better and more homogeneous. And because the chemotherapy aerosols inject with pressure, the drugs will penetrate deeper into the peritoneal lesions. And the dosage we apply is much lower because of our availability within the peritoneal nodule are higher compared to systemic administration. Therefore, systemic side effects are minimal. And last but not least, this treatment allow repeated application because the procedure is applied laparoscopically. And on top of it, we actually can assess the response because uh, peritoneal disease are usually very difficult to manage, to measure through a conventional CT scan and it's best to uh, assess by a laparoscope. And this procedure allows you to assess whether your treatment is um, uh, uh, responding. The pipette uh, is going fast in the world. In general, it, uh, it health. This is the, a slide taken from Professor uh, Martin Huber and see that the publication and procedure and clinical trial of pipettes is um, getting more popular uh, and started in 2012. And since the, the uh, publication in a, a British Journal of Surgery, now this uh, procedure is getting uh, uh, more, more popular in the world. This is some uh, preclinical model to show the, the benefit of uh, pipettes. This is an ex vivo model looking at um, uh, uh, animal and animal using a, a, a mifrin blue, when you apply the mifrin blue comparing conventional lavage versus a pipette, you can see the staining of the mifrin blue are much more intense and more homogeneous in the intestines and the peritoneal cavity by pipette. 
And this is an individual model looking at the tissue penetration using immunofluorescent stain of uh, doxorubicin. And we can see and, um, comp comparing the, the one in, uh, giving a, a, by a conventional liquid solution by Lavage, you can see that the drugs is only on top, like staining on the first layer of the peritoneal lining. But when you are priving the pie patch, the, the drug will penetrate deeper into the peritoneal surface up to seven cell layers. Just recently, there's a review articles on uh, the rationale evidence of a, or potential indication by uh, Lancet, which summarized uh, 45 clinical study in over 1,800 pipette procedures. We show that the pipette is uh, very feasible. Over 84% of patients will be uh, successful apply pipette. And more importantly, complication and adverse event are very rare. Mortality is low. These are very advanced cancer patients. And importantly, these procedures have a minimal impact of quality of life because it's a laparoscopic applications and minimal systemic side effect because the dosage in the circulation is much lower. This is a setup of a pipette. We require a high pressure injector, which is commonly used for in radiological, radiology switch for contrast injection or vascular operating room and a micro pump or electrolyzer, which is a, 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 a mechanical device applied laparoscopically. So well, this is a typical setup at the end of the set, at the end of the, uh, 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 before we apply the procedure, two, two ports, laparoscopic. One is a five millimeter port for the laparoscope, and second port is for the laparoscopic. Just show you a quick uh, video on uh, the procedure. Operative setup is uh, usually we use an uh, 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 operating room with uh, um, a laminar flow and uh, we need to connect the IV line outside the operating room to allow the anaphetes to administer the chemotherapy. The procedure is performed by a general anesthesia. Therefore, this is the IV in, uh, injector machines and we first would bring in the chemotherapy regime and you load it into the, the, con the high pressure injector. And um, the, this is the operating room with a laminar flow. And then we load the chemotherapy into the injector pump, which is similar to uh, the, the vascular operating room. This is the setup of the, uh, the overview of the operating setup. Before we start the procedure, we do a staging laparoscopy. Usually we perform an open introduction of the, the laparoscope. If the patient has ascites, we will add, remove all the acetic fluid and then we'll perform a standard uh, laparoscopy to uh, stage the disease. Like that's just how we mentioned, this patient has uh, malignant ascites. And then um, we also perform a uh, st standard um, uh, uh, four quadrant uh, peritoneal biopsy. And after that, we'll set up the pipette procedure. And the procedures is uh, we set up the cell retaining retractor because during the procedure, where uh, nobody will be inside the operating room except the patients. Therefore, we use a cell retaining retractor to hold uh, both the laparoscope and the, uh, and the, and the laparoscopic. And we check, make sure it's air sealed with low leak. Then we'll uh, stand by all the equipment. And this is the, and before we start the, 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 the pipette treatment, we usually will perform a, a safety checklist. And uh, make sure all the equipment are set up before we leave the operating room. The patient is still under general anesthesia. Once you're ready, then we will act, uh, we outside the operating room, then we'll activate the, the pipettes uh, injections. Just like this. This is a laparoscopic wheel. The one on top is the laparizing pen, pen. And then uh, you can see a patient with uh, 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 peritoneal carcinomatosis. And then at the end of the procedure, then um, you take about 15 minutes, then we'll release the end of uh, the aerosol and we close the wound uh, with uh, like standard procedure. This is our experience so far. We have done uh, uh, 33 pipette procedure. Majority are GI cancer with peritoneal metastasis. And median age is uh, 58. Median PCI score of 15. The standard operative time is about one and a half hours. And uh, we have so far 
uh, um, no mortality, and but we have two cases of a mild pancreatitis. We just completed uh, uh, a phase one uh, uh, a pipette using oxalopectin uh, studies, and this is the pharmacokinetic results, and um, show that uh, the, the, the safety dose, the maximum safety dose is 120 milligram in, uh, uh, in, in these studies. And more importantly, we find that measuring the plasma concentration of the, the chemotherapy, we show that it's only about, it's only 50% uh, in, the, in the blood compared when you administer these drugs uh, in the same dose intravenously. In terms of oncological effects, and this is the result from the review in the Lancet, looking at the uh, gastric cancer alone, there's four cohorts uh, uh, performed. Median uh, histological and, uh, and uh, response about 49 to 80 percent, and the median survival is 11 months. Bear in mind that the, most all these patients have received multiple lines of systemic chemotherapy before they go into a pipette uh, 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 treatment trial at this stage. And this is a pipette now worldwide. You can see that uh, the pipette is started in Europe and now it's uh, very, very popular in Europe, but now it's also extended to different parts of the world, in every part of the world, including Asia Pacific, Australia, and, um, uh, and Americas. And many uh, prospective studies uh, are, on, are ongoing, phase two studies, many phase two studies are in Europe, and in, in France, they're doing a phase three randomized studies for patients with uh, ovarian cancer with peritoneal metastasis, comparing systemic versus pipette and uh, chemotherapy. And in the United States, I know that Mayo Clinic had just started the, 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 the phase two study on uh, pipette. And it's in, Singapore, in Singapore, as you mentioned, that we have, completed, we have done two studies. Uh, both studies is uh, completed. One is the, our phase one study. Second one is the animal study looking at the pipette using a paxitexel. So in summary, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think peritoneal metastasis is one of the most uh, un unmet clinical needs for gastric cancer nowadays. And this is, but there's much advance in treatment of peritoneal metastasis, including uh, intraperitoneal chemotherapy and uh, pipettes. And we all, we hope that in one day, peritoneal metastasis will be no longer an absolute death sentence for our patient. I want to acknowledge our, our, our study group. This is uh, our Singapore peritoneal oncology group, we call SPORS, which comprises of uh, surgeons, medical oncology, and basic scientists looking at uh, this topic of peritoneal carcinomatosis. And um, also, of course, we want to thank our patients and the family for the support of our studies and, um, uh, and, and the support. And last but not least, uh, for, for any of you who are interested in these topics, we just uh, published this uh, review articles on uh, recent advances on intraperitoneal chemotherapy for gastric cancers. And this is an uh, uh, open access. You can download and uh, free. With this, uh, thank you very much for your attention and stay healthy, everyone. Thank you.